Well, why don't we start with why bosses matter? I think that's the first thing that on a podcast like this we should talk about. M much of the work that you and I do is around helping leaders uh, step into and become better versions of themselves uh, to more effectively serve people, to more effectively do what we said at the beginning, create the conditions for people to thrive. Why do bosses matter so much? Wow, that's a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think that really varies. And I, and I would, one of the things that stuck out for me, what you said about service, that's for me, that's my ushy gushy, that's my purpose, that's my place on the earth. That's what I was put in this place to do was to serve other people. And as leaders, the ultimate job is service. Mm -hmm. That's what it is to me. What about you? Well, absolutely. And, and I think about it through the lens of all the social science research out, that's out there about uh, where commitment comes from in the workplace, where employee engagement comes from in the workplace, uh, what employees need to be at their best every day. And we know that the single most influential factor in an employee's commitment and engagement at work is the quality of the relationship they have with their boss and that person's ability to create a complex set of conditions for that employee to meet a complex set of emotional and psychological needs. Mm. And anybody listening to this who has ever had a boss knows that to be true, right? Uh, if you don't believe that, ask yourself this, have you ever worked for a bad boss? <laughs> you know, if you've ever worked for a bad boss, you know that it, it can be a soul crushingly awful experience. Uh, and so we know that bosses matter because at a, at a minimum, they are what make things go in terms of employees showing up and, and giving their effort. That We know that 75% of people who leave a job indicate that their boss is part or all of the reason why. Uh, the, the famous saying goes that people don't quit their jobs, they quit their bosses. How can we remind those boss heroes out there right now of how much they matter? You know, how do they go ahead? How do they get reminded for themselves of because it is slogging through the mud right now? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is just the next day to the next day to the next day. And so, how do we? help them remind themselves of why they matter, what they're doing out there matters so, so much as leaders. I, it's so important that we talk about leadership and being a boss as a noble pursuit, right? Mm -hmm. That those who choose to do it are righteous, right? It's so easy to just worry about yourself. Most people who go to work only have to worry about their work, right? I am responsible for what I am responsible for. I am responsible for my relationships. I am responsible for my duties, my tasks, the quality of my work, and it begins and ends there. And most people who aren't bosses can go home at the end of the day and leave the rest of that worry and whatnot at work. The moment you accept a leadership role, you are accepting that, that there is a sacrifice to take place, right? Mm -hmm. That you are now going to not just be allowed to worry about yourself, that you are going to worry about others, that you are going to care for others, that you're going to take ownership and responsibility for the experience that others have in the workplace. And not only that, you're willing to raise your hand and say, I am going to stand in front of these people as both an example of how we should do things, how we should show up, how we should be, and simultaneously uh, be their cheerleader, be their therapist, be, <laughs> be their uh, coach, their mentor, their professional development officer. And so we don't talk enough about that when it comes to leadership, that, that being a boss is a noble pursuit. You know, there are so many professions uh, in this country that we we lift up, rightfully so, on a pedestal as being 
service oriented roles, right? We talk mm-hmm. about police and, and fire and we talk about um, veterans and we talk about frontline healthcare workers and all of them deserve all of our respect and admiration for all of the work that they do. I would put leaders, bosses right up there because they don't get to turn it off at night. When they lay their he- pillow on their head at night, it's not just about them anymore. It's it's having accepted that I am going to own and, and be accountable for and worry about others. Wow. How powerful that concept of holding yourself as a leader, as a boss, as noble. Mm. I mean, if, if you can hold that for yourself to say, when you're in the depths of the the treasury, you know, the thousandth question of the minutia. Yeah. And, but that's you're in a noble cause. Your your legacy has the ability to be so impactful because you are a boss hero. You are a noble leader. That's that's going to be the healthy self talk on the really bad days, right? When strangling <laughs> isn't an option. <laughs> And somebody has come to you for the 17th time, you just repeat to yourself, I am righteous. I am righteous. It's a noble pursuit. I am righteous. And and you'll get through that moment. Absolutely. But we have to also remember that there's more at stake than just what's in front of me at work. And I think this is a conversation that we have to have more often around leadership as well. If we know that the single most influential factor in the employee experience and in their fulfillment, in their satisfaction, in their engagement, is the quality of the relationship they have with their direct supervisor, then it is not a leap of reasoning to suggest that frontline supervisors have perhaps more influence on our society's mental health and well-being, maybe more than anybody else, right? Imagine, just think about this in this way for a second. If work works for everyone, if I go to work as an employee and I don't think my job sucks, if I feel valued and fulfilled, if I get to use my talents at work in a way uh, that that uh, is really enlightening for me and empowering and uh, I'm making this hand gesture with like I'm running in place, but it means like my cup is full and I'm really getting a lot out of work uh, and, and I, I go to work and I'm, I'm professionally satisfied and fulfilled, imagine what the rest of my life is going to be like, right? I heard Brene Brown recently said there are, uh, there is nobody who is living a happy and fulfilled life who is miserable at work, right? Work takes up so much of our bandwidth. Now imagine what the impact would be on our health, on our wellness, on our relationships, on our finances, on all of the things in this world that matter, if work works for us. And if we know that bosses are what makes work work for us, then bosses are the biggest influence on the overall mental health and well-being of our society as a whole. Yeah, I said it. Wow. Bosses make the world go around. Yes. Amazing. That is you you spelled it out. That was so beautiful and and constructed so well. What stood out for me is what you're talking about with this quality of the relationship that the boss is totally that's that's so within their control. There is so much out of our control right now, Mm -hmm. but that the quality of the relationship that they get to have with those frontline folks that make the world of work go around, that's totally within their control. Let's take a moment to just go, okay, I got control of that, right? There's, because there is so much out of our control right now. And the boss heroes, you know, we use that term and we're going to continue to use that term to really talk about those folks who care about being a great boss, who, who show up daily and give it all they've got. Um, th- they control it because they reach for it. They control it because they say, this is something that I care about and I want to have influence over. Uh, there, there are lots of folks who step into leadership roles, uh, but I feel like there's really only three paths, right? People mm-hmm. step into a, a leadership role where they're now responsible for managing people people and they either decide that they don't like it so they wash out they figure out 
hey, this requires a whole new set of skills and a whole different mindset, and I'm really going to have to acquire, develop s some new skills and perspectives and ideas to get good at that. And so they work on it. And that's really what it means to ascend to leadership. It's not the title. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that I've accepted to work on myself to be good at the managing of people and the supporting of people. And the third option is, unfortunately, what happens too much is people step into a management role and they stay stuck in this idea of managing processes, right? My job is to keep ah. the trains running on time. And so I'm going to sit in my office and I'm going to do reports uh, and and handle schedules and all of the, the, the paper and logistics and numbers aspects of the job. And they never take on the people side of yeah. being in charge. And so Sometimes those folks land in those positions and they stay there for a long time and mm -hmm. boy, they create a lot of suffering, right? Uh, they create a lot of suffering for folks who work for them because they have not, they've decided not to reach for the people side of what it is they're supposed to do. That suffering exists in the absence of the care and mm -hmm. the cultivation of that commitment uh, at the helm, at the leadership level. Mm hmm. And so I think one of the things that we are really devoted to in this podcast is to talk about consistently the the things that bosses need to hear in order to remember that it's a noble pursuit, in order to continue developing the skills and knowledge and self-awareness and relationships. Those are my big four when I think about how I work with clients to develop leaders. It's it's self-awareness, knowledge, skills, and relationships uh, that we're going to try to focus on those things in this podcast to help folks boss better. And when we think about the podcast and come up with some ways to do that, we want to have fun. Do you like to have fun, Alyssa? I love to have fun, Joe. Love it. We're gonna we have lots of of segments planned to to have fun. I hope. Um, uh, you said earlier, bosses run the world, and I feel like we should petition Beyonce for <laughs> that to be. We go from girls run the world to okay. bosses run the world, and so maybe if our podcast explodes and takes off, <laughs> we can get the beehive. And the boss hive, maybe we're the boss hive. Oh, my gosh. To now Creepy. then go and create the next great Beyonce song, Bosses Rule the World. Wow. that I mean, We're going to change the world. We are dreaming big here at Boss, <laughs> boss Better Now. <laughs> uh